this day wherever you listen to your podcast. I am really looking forward to this video because it's just going to be a chill Q&A conversation type video where you guys submitted questions on my Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, make sure you do because you can be a part of these episodes. I sourced a bunch of questions that you guys submitted and oh my gosh, I am so shocked by the amount of responses I received from you guys. Like, thank you so much for participating. There was so many questions. I have so many screenshots on my phone and I'm really excited to get into them because I haven't done a Q&A style video in a while with you guys and I'm really looking forward to just kind of seeing what you guys are interested in knowing, having a conversation talk about all different types of topics and yeah I'm really looking forward to it it is late at night as usual I mean I film most of my videos super late at night I think it's like what time 11 30 11 30 at night ladies and gentlemen and I have to be up at 5 a.m for calls in the morning Ugh. I really need to work on my time management <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm super excited to get into this video. You guys asked so many different types of questions and I literally asked you like hit me with anything, whatever you want to know, whatever you want to talk about. Let's just jump into it. So I have a bunch of the questions here that I'm going to run through. I'm really excited to see. I mean, I was able to look at them kind of briefly before, but I haven't decided which ones I'm going to respond to yet. So I'm just going to answer them as we go. And I'm really looking forward to it. So first question Unsurprisingly, a lot of you guys asked about skincare and skincare advice, which I absolutely love whenever you guys ask these questions. Let me know in the future if you guys want more YouTube videos where I'm responding to your guys' questions and building you guys' skincare routines, because I personally really love making those videos, but th they don't perform as well, which is fine. But like, let me know if you guys want to see more of those in the future, because I'd love to make them. But of course, I got a bunch of skincare advice questions. Uh, this one by Shifion, uh, they asked, what can you do against large pores? And this is a really good question because I do get a lot of people that are like how do I shrink my pores how do I make my pores you know less big what can I do about that and I'm just gonna be 100% honest there is no way that you can change the size of your pores that is something that is uh, affected first and foremost by genetics like genetically if you have larger pores you just have larger pores and there's nothing you can really do about it but it's also affected by your environment as well so if you have oily skin and if you live in a humid environment for example like me um, your pores will be larger than other people um, or you know it'll just respond to the environment that way and same if you have you know dry skin maybe your pores aren't as visible um, which comes with its own set of issues um, I want to make it clear that having large pores is not necessarily a bad thing that does mean that your skin is producing oil which is a good thing um, but there's really nothing you can do to change the size of your pores however you can help with minimizing the appearance of your pores and in my opinion the best way to help with that is by using salicylic acid salicylic acid Acid goes deep into the pores and exfoliates out any dirt that's built up if you have you know blackness or darkness in the pores salicylic acid will help to clear that out which is gonna make your pores a lot less visible um, if you do have really large pores that maybe you know you're interested in kind of minimizing there's also primers that you can use out there or moisturizers that have silicones in them that help to kind of create a smooth surface uh, over top of your pores which helps to make them less obvious my biggest recommendation as well is to use sunscreen because sun damage and just sun exposure overall can really affect not only just the general health of your skin but it can also affect you know pore size and how your pores can be damaged from the sun so by using a sunscreen it'll help to minimize that damage long term and help to make sure that your pores don't become more visible in the future but i will say I do see a lot of conversations around pores and I've seen a lot of negative marketing around them too. And I'm just like, bro, we have skin. Skin has pores. It is totally natural and normal to have visible pores. It's literally the way that our skin stays healthy. It is, you know, making sure that we stay hydrated and we don't have severe skin issues. So I think overall, like there's no need to be super focused on visible pores because it's literally what keeps our skin healthy and alive and functioning. So don't don't psych yourself out too much about it. I know it's easier said than done, but in my opinion, I think we do need to shift the conversation around pores because it's totally normal to have them. Literally everyone has them. You should have them. Aaron asked a really cool question. They asked, what is the number one country you would like to visit and why? I love this question because I am someone who's always been very passionate about traveling and I want to visit as many countries as I can in the future. But um, I've always wanted to go to India. I am just absolutely fascinated by the culture. I think it is so rich and beautiful and just 
vibrant in every sense of the word. I think it's such a beautiful culture. And it's also like uh, from everyone I've talked to, India is a very concentrated experience. Like you are kind of thrust into an environment, at least if you're from the USA, for example, you're kind of thrust into an environment and a culture that's very different than what we're used to. And those are personally my favorite travel experiences because that's where you're able to grow the most. That's where you're able to better understand people and become more empathetic and understanding. That's where you're able to have life experiences that you never even thought were possible and my personal favorite experiences has have always been traveling to the countries that have drastically different cultures than our own and it's just gorgeous there like oh the people the food the music uh, the fashion uh, the nature like everything about India I think is fascinating and I would absolutely love to go but I do want to go at some point when I can go with someone who is from India or who really understands the culture and the country because I would want a truly authentic experience where I can connect as much as I can with the culture rather than just you know like a touristy experience. So this next person, so so this next person, I'm not sure what their name is. They asked, hey, I have small bumps on my forehead. What to do? So this could be a bunch of different things. And I'm not a dermatologist. I can't say what the bumps on your forehead may be attributed to because it could be irritation. It could be, you know, um, minimal acne or it could be something that's really commonly referred to as fungal acne. Fungal acne is essentially like a bacteria that is present on the skin um, from over moisture or you know just too I guess humid of an environment on your skin that you get a bunch of little bumps and this is really common fungal acne is very common but it can be difficult to treat because it's not like regular acne where you would say use like salicylic acid or exfoliants it's a little bit different um, I personally recommend using a shampoo <laughs> as a cleanser on your face and I know that sounds super freaking weird but I've made TikToks about this I've made a YouTube video diving fully into it um, you can use a shampoo that has an ingredient called ketoconazole, which is able to help clear that excess bacteria off of your skin um, and make sure that you have skin that isn't too moist and humid of an environment where that fungal acne will come up. Now, by no means is this a solution for everyone. I honestly recommend going and watching my video where I fully dive into it because I talk about like who it can be best for and how to best use it and the best shampoos that I recommend. Um, but it's a great way of being able to help with those little bumps that can be really frustrating to remove. And it's definitely been very helpful for my skin as well. But I'd say if it's something that's really persistent and nothing is working to get rid of it and you really can't figure it out, I would recommend going to a dermatologist if you are able to because um, little bumps like that can be really tricky to, I guess, diagnose. And it definitely could be from something like skin irritation as well. That's really common too, where your skin will have a bunch of <clears throat> essentially like just reactions in the form of little bumps due to ingredients that are in your products or just products not really agreeing with your skin. So it, it just go watch that video that I made. Hopefully can answer some of your questions and be helpful for you. I love this next question. I'm not sure what her name is exactly. Mire? Mire? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm really bad with pronunciations for, well, literally anything. Like, watch me pr try to pronounce skincare ingredients on my channel. It's a shit show. But um, she asked, what is your favorite what is your current favorite song? I love this question because this is something that I love asking like anyone in my life. I love being able to hear like people's playlists and what they listen to and kind of what inspires them or motivates them because music is something that I've always loved and it's just, you know, so enjoyable to me. So I'd say right now, actually, let me look at my Spotify right now. Let me check this out because honestly, my favorite song changes pretty much every day. I'd say I usually discover about three to four new songs per day so my spotify library is popping it is i spend way too much time listening to spotify music um but i'd say right now it would have to be oh man there's so many good ones um i'd say wtf marada remix it is definitely not like the majority of music i listen to it's like a very intense 
loud head banging type song but i think it's super fun like it you know just to hype up my energy and it's it's just a really fun song to listen to but i've honestly really been loving i'm good uh by david Guetta, the one from tiktok that's like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know if if you know the original blue song then you know exactly what i'm talking about something about that song is just good vibes and i keep listening to it over and over again even though it's kind of like a simple song but I love it. That's the one I've been listening to the most recently, I would say. If you can't tell, I'm very much into EDM. That is like my music style. It's like 98% of what I listen to. So anytime you ask me what my favorite song is or what I'm currently listening to, it will always be EDM. This next question is a really good skincare question that I get asked literally all the time. I see it in my comment sections every day and I've made TikToks about it and YouTube videos about it as well. But uh, Katie asked, do you really need sunscreen if you're not leaving the house in Canada? So here's the thing. I personally believe that sunscreen is the most important part of your skincare routine. And I know that, you know, some people live in environments where there's not a lot of sunlight throughout the day. Uh, maybe they're inside, they're not going outside. You're able to like work from home, for example. Like there could be so many different reasons why, you know, maybe sunscreen doesn't seem like the most important part of your skincare routine. But sun damage is responsible for 90% of premature aging within the skin and re responsible for so much of the damage that a lot of times we spend a ton of money later on in life trying to undo. And that's why I believe it's the most important thing because the sun, you know, love the sun, love the outdoors, but it definitely is very harmful to the skin. And when it comes to, you know, people who say might not leave their house, if you are by window light, um, you know, the sun is shining through your windows. It is, you know, somewhat bright in your house because of the sun outside. Uh, windows don't filter out uh, both UVA and UVB damage. And so because of that, you can still get sun damage on your skin just by being inside and, you know, having natural light inside. Now, if you're someone who, you know, maybe lives in a house that doesn't have any natural light, please open up some windows because natural light is good for the mental health. I, I think it's definitely good to be in an environment that's bright and happy and sunny, you know, wh wherever possible. But even if it's cloud cover, even if it doesn't seem like it's bright outside, you can still get sun damage. And while, you know, I would say maybe you don't need to be super intense about reapplying your sunscreen and, you know, be really strict about your sunscreen regimen, I still think that it is a good idea to use sunscreen. Um, I've literally had people ask me who live in like Northern Canada or Finland or Norway. They're like, do I still need to wear it? Honestly, it is totally up to you, but I always recommend it. I think it's very important during the daytime. If your skin is being exposed to any type of natural light, you really should be wearing sunscreen. Um, but the good news is that there's a bunch of really affordable sunscreen screens you can find out there a bunch of really good options um, that don't break the bank and if you want to see what some of those recommendations are I've made a ton of YouTube videos and made drugstore sunscreen videos you can watch my best of 2022 sunscreen video because I shared a bunch of recommendations and affordable ones there too so go check out those videos um, because you'll be able to find some but yeah I'd say that's personally what I recommend for anyone who's kind of on the fence about wearing sunscreen this next one isn't really a question. Uh, it's just from a girl. I think her name is Ida, but she said, I just love you so much. And I just want to say thank you guys to the people who, you know, stick around and are watching my videos and, you know, uh, are really there for me. I, I really, really appreciate it. I don't know. I know it's such a simple statement, but seeing this comment, I was like, oh my God, you're so sweet. Thank you guys so much. Seriously, for all the love that you always show me, because you don't even know how much it means to me and how much it can improve my day when you know I'm struggling so I, I really really appreciate it thank you this next question I thought was really creative they said how do I very kindly manipulate my boyfriend into falling in love with skincare this is a really good question I think this is hilarious because I know so many of you guys who watch my videos are like oh I really want you know my boyfriend, my brother, my dad, my husband to, you know, start using skincare. And I think that's amazing. One of the main things that I personally recommend is to have a nighttime routine that you can do with them. Or it could be morning time too, but I feel like nighttime is the easiest because, you know, a lot of people will like go to bed at the same time. I think it's great like when they're going to brush their teeth, when they're just getting ready to 
go to bed to start, you know, introducing them into a skincare routine. Now, a lot of guys, you know, just because the way it is and the way that the industry is positioned towards women versus men, um, a lot of, you know, guys, I think will kind of be intimidated by doing a full routine at first, but that's why I recommend starting off with one product at a time. Like it could be a moisturizer, it could be a cleanser. Usually guys are kind of like most open to trying out cleansers first. And then from then on, as they develop the habit of using one product, then you can kind of introduce using more products. And as you're doing your full routine, um, it will kind of incentivize them to want to do the full routine with you every night and kind of spend that time with you. And I, I've, from what you guys have told me before, from what I've heard from people in my life, that's kind of like the easiest and the best way to get guys into doing skincare. And it definitely is possible because there are so many people in my life where they're guys and they had absolutely no interest in skincare whatsoever. But when their girlfriends started doing it with them and they developed that nightly habit, now they're like, oh my gosh, I, I have to do my skincare routine before I go to bed or I have to do my skincare routine in the morning. And I think that's just so beautiful. <laughs> I think that's amazing. And shout out to all the girlfriends or wives out there who are putting you know the guys in your life on a skincare routine because you're doing the lord's work baby this next question i love this is from matilda and she asked do you believe in manifesting and i'm gonna be 100 percent honest guys i have never been the type of person who's into like you know energy and the universe and manifesting and you know all that kind of stuff like i not that there's anything wrong with it i don't think there is i think I am just such a skeptical person when it comes to that kind of stuff. So I really didn't believe in manifesting for the longest time. However, I remember when I was, you know, first, well, not first doing YouTube. I had been doing YouTube for like a year and a half. But at that point, I started to take YouTube seriously. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to try and really commit myself to this and really turn it into something, you know, more than something I just do for fun on the side. Um, and so what I did is I printed out on paper and framed all of my goals. I think there was six goals that I did. Yeah. Yeah. Six goals that I printed out and I put up on my wall in front of me that I would see every time I woke up in the morning and right before I went to bed every single night. That's all I did. I didn't, you know, tell myself these things every day. I didn't write them down in my planner. I wasn't like, you know, uh, making my mind hyper fixate on these things. I just had them in front of me. And guess what? A year later, every single one of the things that I had printed and put out um, ended up coming true. And that's really for me when I realized like, wow, manifestation is a real thing. And if you are, you know, uh, helping to remind your brain of the goals that you're wanting to achieve alongside of course the absolutely critical thing because I think a lot of people kind of skip over this in the conversation around manifesting you have to apply yourself you have to put in the work you definitely have to really commit yourself like uh, you can't just manifest something without putting in the labor and expect it to you know come true and all your dreams you know magically appear that's not how it works but if you are you know helping your brain to be reminded of whatever you want to achieve and working towards it I definitely believe in manifestation and ever since then I was like holy shit there really is something to this manifestation and that's what I get for being so skeptical and being you know such a critic when it comes to the conversation around manifestation but I definitely believe that like what you put out into the universe and you, what you want to achieve if you apply yourself and if you remind yourself of that uh every day that it definitely can come true so I highly recommend manifestation for anyone out there who is interested in trying it out because it definitely worked for me Here's yet another skincare question. I love all these skincare questions. So she asked, my skincare routine is literally three steps. Should it be longer? Great question. So as someone who is a fan of minimalistic skincare, I don't really believe in the whole like eight step, 10 step, 12 step, 2,500 step skincare routine. Like that's never been what I have felt is best for the health of the skin or best for your wallet or the environment. I think having a really simple skincare routine is the best route you can go three steps i say is maybe a little less than i personally would recommend i've always said that you know the perfect skincare routine has four steps cleanser treatment moisturizer and sunscreen whatever those look like for you and whatever caters to the specific skin concerns that you have those are the four necessary steps that you absolutely have to have in a skincare routine anything beyond that is 
totally not necessary. It, you know, really is up to you. Um, but that's what I recommend. Three steps. I think with three, you are kind of lacking in like each one of the four steps have their own unique and functional purpose for being in a skincare routine. So if it's only three steps, you might be kind of skipping out on that. However, if you're cleansing using a treatment and using sunscreen, a lot of sunscreens are rich enough that they essentially mimic the benefits of a moisturizer or they have a lot of the same ingredients that moisturizers have, which is where you could totally just use the sunscreen uh, as your moisturizer and sunscreen kind of in one. So I think a three-step routine is fine with that. But I personally do recommend a four-step skincare routine with each of those steps that I just described. And if you want to learn more about like, you know, all the basics of skincare, I literally have a skincare 101 series where I go through all the most important steps, what you need to be doing and what you should look for. So I highly recommend checking that out. But um, yeah, I'd say four steps is is definitely the gold standard for what I'd recommend. But again, you know your skin best. If it's really working for you and you found that your skin has just transformed and it's doing really well and you're really satisfied with the results who am i to say that you shouldn't do that you know so totally up to you but i would recommend four steps this next one is a really heartfelt question and i'm grateful that someone asked it uh katie had asked how is your mental health lately and yeah i mean i'm just gonna be like super freaking honest with you guys um my mental health has not been the best I will say, and I think it's due to kind of a lot of factors in life. I will say like being online and having this career is, you know, literally the best thing that's ever happened to me, but it's also comes with its challenges. And I think it is difficult as an individual when your livelihood and your brand and kind of everything is focused on yourself and putting content out there and being the face of everything. I think it just kind of comes with mental health tolls. And I've noticed this for other creators, they kind of go through the same kind of journey of the initial high and just like, oh my God, this is amazing. This is the best thing ever. And then kind of coming to terms with the side effects of being in this position and, you know, how that can affect the mental health and self-esteem. And I'm going to be honest, you know, the internet is a really brutal place. It's difficult with things like, you know, hate comments or negativity or, you know, views that aren't as you know good as they have been in the past. I personally can relate to that because, you know, I don't know if it's just my audience or people out there in general I feel like it's kind of the industry overall but the beauty industry online is not what it used to be people just aren't as invested as they used to be in it which is totally fine and I think it's natural and I think you know it's totally expected that that would happen uh it is difficult not to internalize that and feel like I'm doing something wrong or there's something wrong with me or my content and that does affect the mental health and so You know, transparently, mental health has been a little bit of a struggle lately, but I've continued going to therapy, um, continued finding solutions and committing to improving my mental health. And I will say, uh, even though mental health has been struggling, I am really proud of myself for the steps I've been taking to improve my mental health because in the past and if you've watched my mental health series here on YouTube, um, you're probably familiar with the coping mechanisms that I've used in the past uh, to kind of, you know, (sighs) temporarily put a bandaid on the bigger issues that are going on. And I think what I've been doing lately is trying as much as possible to be proactive about healthily dealing with uh, mental health concerns that I've had in a way that is much healthier than I ever have done before in the past. Uh, because if it was, if it was the old me, uh, being in this position now, ooh, it would be a disaster. It would not be good. Um, but I'm really proud of myself. I think, I think I'm doing the best I can. Um, but yeah, you know, mental health has been a struggle. And I think that's just kind of how it is for everyone. Like, I don't know, a, like, anyone in my life and just kind of seeing what the world is going through right now what people are saying online like it feels like everyone is just kind of going through it right now and it makes sense the pandemic was you know really difficult for a lot of us and regardless of what you know your physical circumstances may have been I think there's you know a lot of mental trauma that kind of came along with the pandemic we're all in a place where we're trying to kind of like forget that it happened but I don't think a lot of us have kind of reconciled the the mental impact that it had and uh, I don't know a lot of people I know are really struggling right now so I 
don't think it's just me. I think a lot of us are, you know, just pushing through right now. But that's the thing I've learned with mental health is that, you know, in the difficult times and the challenging times, you just got to keep pushing. You got to find whatever you can that keeps you motivated and keeps you moving forward and keeps you focused on the positivity. And that's what I've been doing. And that's what's worked in the past whenever I've had difficulties and it's definitely going to work now. So yeah, doing the best I can, but I will say there are so many things in my life that I'm so grateful for. And, you know, I am so grateful to be in this position and be able to have this connection with you guys um, because it really does bring me a lot of joy even if there are struggles and even if there are challenges it does bring me a lot of joy and more than anything I'm super grateful for you guys we have yet another skincare question I love it uh, Trin asked do you recommend any good moisturizers that are relatively cheap um, yeah there are so many I've made a bunch of videos on my channel like I think that's the main thing with like a lot of the skincare questions you guys have been asking like if you look on my channel and you search for whatever you're concerned with whatever you're dealing with I want to say most likely I have done videos related to that specific topic and I've done a bunch of videos on super affordable moisturizers, drugstore moisturizers. Um, in every one of my best of videos that I've done over the years, um, I always make sure to include affordable moisturizers, but I'd say like I love the e.l.f. Happy Hydration Moisturizer. e.l.f. has a lot of really good ones that are fragrance free and good for sensitive skin. Aveeno has great moisturizers as well, like the Calm and Restore line. Um, there's there's a bunch out there even if you want to keep it really basic the ordinary moisturizer it's it's not my personal favorite um but it's pretty good the inky list oh they've finally come out with more moisturizers that are really good i love the omega water cream there's a bunch of really good ones and i highly recommend just checking out my videos that i've made on them um already uh because there's a lot of really good ones i'd say my personal favorite one lately has been the inky list omega water cream just because i love a good water cream and i think that one's ten dollars a really good price point so if anything go check out my videos i've made a bunch about really affordable moisturizers that are super good for the skin this next question oh my gosh i love this one i think this is super fun um this person asked funny drinking stories please and i will say i do have a good amount not as many now as i used to when i first started drinking i you know had to learn what my tolerance was and so that included getting too drunk many times and I'm personally <clears throat> not a person who enjoys getting drunk like that's not my favorite thing I like you know going and getting a cocktail maybe having a few drinks with friends but getting drunk is not enjoyable and let me tell you why um, this story is a perfect example of why I don't like getting drunk so uh, this was a few years ago I was uh, having like a celebration night we had gone out to a speakeasy it was like a group of us we went to a speakeasy, we had a uh, dinner, and then we had a bunch of drinks afterwards. And I love speakeasies because they have the highest quality, most delicious, incredible, artistic uh, cocktails. And uh, because of that, I definitely had too many drinks and I learned a very, very valuable lesson yet again uh, about my body that I cannot eat shortly before I have been drinking. It's just not I've learned too many times why that's not a good idea and so anyway <clears throat> I had eaten I was drinking um, and then we were headed back home and one fun thing about me is that I tend to get car sick um, particularly when I am drunk uh, something about me being in the car and the motion just makes me very nauseous <laughs> and uh, my best friend was driving we were there was a bunch of us in the car I think there was like six of us total in the car I was in the front seat um, and as we were driving I was just kind of laying there I was closing my eyes because I you know my stomach wasn't feeling well and then all of a sudden I projectile vomited all over the dashboard all in in front of me on the floor uh, it got on my best friend's shirt I felt so bad and it took everyone completely by surprise because everyone was at a good level and I wasn't even like super drunk um, I think it was just the mix of food with the drinks that just pushed me over the edge and when I say projectile it was like you know turning on a fire hose it was bad and it 
created quite the scene for the night and I felt so bad. And you know the worst part about it? That is not my first time throwing up in a car. <laughs> I have done it multiple times while I'm drunk and that is why I don't like drinking. And when I have been drinking, I always, you know, well, if I am drunk, I guess, um, I make sure to sober up before going in a car because I cannot handle just, you know, not only the level of embarrassment, but also I feel so bad for anyone else who has to be in the car and cleaning it up and all that. Oh, 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 it's so embarrassing to think about. But I guess that's the fun thing about funny drinking stories is that they always, you know, entail some type of morbid humiliation. And I definitely was humiliated. That was super embarrassing. <laughs> but yeah, I have, I unfortunately, too many, too many drinking stories. But thankfully, at this point in life, I really don't have very many because I was able to learn what my tolerance is and I'm able to learn what I enjoy when it comes to drinking and it's definitely not getting drunk. Jazz asked a really interesting question. She said, what started your passion for skincare? Was your skin bad before you started skincare? I really like this question because I think a lot of people think that like I've always had a somewhat healthy a good skin I guess and I will say I personally have never struggled with like really bad cystic acne or horrific eczema or really bad skin conditions but let me tell you guys my skin did not used to be good I really struggled with premature aging when I was 16 years old all the way up until I was like 20 years old uh, to the point that a lot of people in my life were like Hiram you need to start taking care of your skin. You're looking really old. Something about my genetics and I think growing up on a cattle ranch in Arizona, always being in the sun and having no concept of what skincare or sunscreen is, um, just made my skin age really quickly. So I had pretty deep set wrinkles in my forehead, um, you know, all over my face uh, when I was like freaking 16 years old. Like, it was ridiculous. And so, um, yeah, I, you know, was able to reverse a lot of that damage, thankfully, by starting to use skincare. Like when I learned about exfoliation and retinol and moisturizing and sunscreen, that made such a huge difference in my skin. But I definitely did not used to have good skin. And all throughout middle school and high school, I would always consistently have acne on my face. It was always there very persistent um thankfully i didn't have it all over but i would always have huge pimples on my forehead um or around my face which was really frustrating so i'm very grateful to say that you know my skin has gotten a lot better than what it used to be i was able to undo a lot of that damage and i haven't had a lot of really severe skin issues but i think uh, some people think that i've like never struggled with like having pimples or having skin scr struggles and that is absolutely not true i definitely have um and that's why i actually believe in skincare that's what got me into skincare in the first place because when i was able to see the difference that was made in my skin um the reduction of premature aging from using skincare that's when i you know had the epiphany like oh my god this isn't just fancy products that people buy to make themselves feel better. Like this stuff actually works. Like it actually makes a difference in your skin. That's what, you know, initially got me super interested in skincare. And then once I started learning about ingredients and formulas, then I just became absolutely addicted. But that initial hook was seeing that difference in my own skin. And that's why I believe in skincare so much because I'm like, it's not just something that is for aesthetics. Like it actually does make you feel better and it actually does work really well on the skin and have powerful transformations so yeah that's kind of a very you know abridged a very short version of why I first got into the skincare space. Mary Poza asked if I see you can I take a photo with you absolutely let me make this my public statement I know I've said this so many times already but let me make this a public statement that yes if you see me in public please come and say hi I would absolutely love to meet you I love taking pictures with you guys it's so much fun to talk um, I'm definitely the type of person where you know if I meet you I'm gonna want to talk I'm gonna want to like hear who you are and hear about your story and all that and um, I love having those conversations but uh, I will say I do have some social anxiety so I may not initially look super approachable i have been told that by multiple people where they're like you kind of look intimidating if i'm not talking to you and i'm like oh my god i feel so bad because i don't mean to look intimidating at all but please come up and say hi i absolutely love meeting you guys that's like literally my favorite part of the job uh, a part of this life is being able to meet you guys in person so please come and say hi i would absolutely love to meet you we can totally take a photo together we can talk chat uh just please say hi i love you guys
V asked best hand lotion with SPF and I'm going to be 100% honest. I don't even know. I haven't found a hand cream that has SPF that I personally have used or enjoyed. I don't even really know if that's like a big thing. I know I haven't seen a lot of products like that. I think maybe Super Goop has one. Um, but if you guys have any recommendations, let me know. I honestly would just recommend using like a cheap sunscreen uh, on your hands because and I'm honestly, I'm really bad about that, guys. I need to do better about applying sunscreen to my hands. Kind of the golden rule of skincare is like whatever you apply on your face, apply on your hands. And I don't follow that rule. I'm sorry. But if you guys know any, you know, hand creams with SPF, let me know because I would absolutely love to try and review for, your, review for you guys. Sharina asked a really insightful question that I think is super cool. She said, what's the biggest lesson you've learned this year? Um, that's a really good question. Very deep. I'd say the biggest lesson I've personally learned is that it's okay to chill. <laughs> It's okay to take it easy. It's okay not to be constantly working and overexerting yourself and pushing yourself to the absolute limit. And thankfully, I've had so many people in my life tell me this lesson, but I'm a hard-headed bitch. I am a Taurus. I'm very stubborn. And I tend to learn lessons through my own actions rather than heeding other people's advice, which is something I really try and work on. But, you know, for so long people in my life who saw my lifestyle where I was constantly working, you know, not getting any sleep. Like last year I was pulling, you know, like at least one all nighter a week, but a lot of times multiple all nighters per week and just going nonstop. Um, I had so many people that were like, Hiram, you need to slow down. You need to like chill and take it easy. This is not healthy. You're going to burn out. And I was like, no, I'm fine. I love it. I love working. I love doing this stuff. And then I burnt out and then I felt the exhaustion and then I very quickly realized, oh my God, my body cannot handle this. This is not good for my mental health. And I am just absolutely fucking exhausted. And so I think that's one of the biggest lessons I've learned is just like, take it easy. You know, life is meant to be enjoyed and we don't need to have this, you know, obsessive approach to working and being productive and getting stuff done and building a future for yourself, blah, 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 blah. Like, don't get me wrong. That stuff is important. But if it comes at the cost of your physical and mental health, it's not worth it. And that's a lesson I am actively learning. By no means am I in a position where I <laughs> am like the epitome of work-life balance. And, you know, I wake up and do yoga and blah, blah, blah. I'm not at that level. I mean, I'm literally filming this video at 1130 at night. Well, now it is 1230 at night. So, you know, that, that goes to show you how thick my skull is and how difficult it is for me to actually internalize this advice. However, this past year was the first time in my life where I was ever like, you know what, I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to relax. I'm going to make sure I'm getting more sleep. I'm going to take better care of my physical health and I'm not going to just be so focused on like goals and building dreams and my future and work and all this stuff. Uh, I think it's definitely good to have that focus, but it needs to come with balance and I think I've done a lot better this year at establishing that balance and figuring out a way that I can, you know, have relaxing, enjoyable experiences while also, you know, doing work and focusing on the future and, you know, b building a, a life for myself. Um, yeah, I think I've just learned to like, just chill the fuck out, like take it easy, relax, bro. It's not that serious. I think we just take I know for me, I take life way too seriously sometimes and I just really need to chill and realize that like Hiram, just take it day by day. It's, you know, it's don't stress out about everything so much and don't be so hyper fixated on like work and your future all the time. It's okay. You can relax. This next question is a little bit of a complicated one and it's one that I've actually talked about in my New Year's video. You can go watch that if you want like more context, but um, they asked, why isn't Sephora selling your skincare line? Are you discontinuing it? Please don't. And let me just tell you, first of all, we are not discontinuing Selfless. Absolutely not. Selfless will continue forward. Um, we have some really exciting plans for 2023, stuff that is coming up very soon that is going to make the line even more accessible. Um, it's going to 
give more people the opportunity to try it out. Um, we're going to be, you know, available in more locations that we weren't available in before through Sephora. But I want to say that like working with Sephora has been absolutely incredible. Like they helped launch the line globally and turned the brand into something so much bigger than I ever could have anticipated or expected. Uh, it's been an absolutely wonderful experience and I'm so grateful for the time that Selfless has been at Sephora. Um, I think, you know, where we are at now, uh, the relationship has changed a little bit, it's still a positive relationship, but I think, you know, in moving forward with the goals that Sephora has and with the goals that we have, I think there just wasn't alignment. And one of my biggest focuses when it has come to my skincare recommendations, everything that I have on my channel and what I see the future of Selfless by Hiram as is accessibility, you know, wanting to make sure that the products are uh, accessible to people um, where they're able to find products that are formulated with mindful ingredients that are powerful, that are, you know, uh, free from common irritants. Uh, that's always been something that's really important to me. And that's why I'm really excited about what is coming in 2023, because it will you know, make selfless even more accessible than it has been before. Um, but I think just, you know, with the direction that Sephora is heading and with the direction that selfless is heading, uh, it's just two different paths. And we found that, you know, uh, it would be best to part ways. And so selfless by Hiram is no longer available at Sephora, but not to worry, you will still be able to get your selfless products. Uh, you can always go to selfless by Hiram .com. Uh, the, all the products are for sale there. You can purchase any of them. Um, and, get all your skincare products there. So don't even worry about that. And as far as, you know, more availability, there is more news to come in the future that I'm stoked to tell you guys about. Uh, so stay tuned, but no, by no means we are not discontinuing it. Uh, we are continuing on, but as far as the relationship with Sephora, uh, we have gone on different paths and selfless will no longer be at Sephora. But I want to say thank you guys so much for supporting the brand while it has been at Sephora. Like you're, you guys are absolutely incredible. You turn this brand into something just so absolutely incredible and I really appreciate you guys for it it was incredible launching with Sephora um but I am excited for what is to come uh but yeah more than anything just thank you guys for the constant support this question comes from Milena Mylena Milena I'm not sure uh how did you get into coffee do you consider your brand specialty coffee so I love this question um I know there has been I've seen a lot of the comments and a lot of questions around coffee and like you know people are just like why the hell are you getting into coffee like this came out of nowhere like wh why are you doing this um coffee has always been something I'm super passionate about um I think it's uh you know something that I absolutely love I literally drink so much coffee every day uh but I've always been interested in it even more than just like something I drink I've always loved learning about the sourcing and the bean quality and the roasting levels and all that kind of stuff and uh, I had the opportunity to partner with Foxtail Coffee a coffee company that I love and they are specialty coffee they're some of the highest quality coffee that I've ever found and definitely like the best tasting coffee um, and so being able to partner with them was a really cool opportunity to launch this collaboration uh, Selfless Coffee if you haven't checked us out you can go to selfless.coffee and find the coffee blends there but um, honestly it was something that I really just wanted to do for fun but more than anything the main focus of this was I wanted to figure out ways to increase the social impact that uh, Selfless by Hiram has been able to have and be able to contribute even more to uh, the charity partner, uh, specifically Thirst Project. I think what Thirst Project does is absolutely incredible. Um, being able to connect people with clean drinking water, I think is such an important issue. And for me, I wanted to figure out a way to even further the impact uh, that Thirst Project is able to make uh, beyond what Selfless by Harem is able to do on its own. So I thought, you know, trying different products, trying new things would be a fun avenue to go in, you know, in an alliance with uh, something I'm really passionate about, which is coffee. So uh, it's something that I did for fun that I really just wanted to try and experiment with and be able to share like my passion for coffee with you guys, my love for it. Um, I know it may come a little out of left field because so much of my content is solely focused on skincare, but you know, th there's more elements to me. There's more things that I'm passionate about beyond skincare and coffee is one of them. And I thought it would just be a really cool project that could have a positive social impact uh, that is able to help connect more people with clean drinking water and be able to, you know, 
have you guys taste the wonderful coffee that I love. So that really was the purpose of it. Um, and I hope you guys are enjoying it. If any of you guys have purchased coffee and you've tried it out, please comment down below. I would love to hear your feedback if you guys like the coffee because uh, it's something I've really enjoyed doing, was really excited about, and I drink it literally every day. Oh my God, there are so many more questions that you guys submitted. Honestly, I'm considering doing like a part two to this video or at least just continuing this Q&A format. If you guys enjoy these Q&A podcasts, let me know because I would love to do them in the future. I had a bunch of fun responding to your guys' questions. I wish I could get through all of them, but there was just way too many to count. So thank you so much to everyone who did submit questions. I had a really good time responding to them. Uh, I really enjoyed this. And thank you guys, as always, for being super supportive and super involved with my content like not a day goes by that I'm not so grateful for the love that you show me and all the appreciation and I you know I I've tried so many times to put it into words my appreciation for you guys and I never can but I just want to say thank you so much for you know getting involved in this and if you want to see more in the future just let me know I think it'd be super fun to do it again and if anything I definitely have enough questions to do another podcast episode like this uh, moving forward if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the Just Position YouTube channel. If you want to see my face while we do these episodes, we have a bunch of really cool guests on, have super cool conversations that I know you guys would really enjoy listening to. So make sure you check out some of the other episodes. This has been a production of Cadence 13 and Odyssey Studio. New episodes out every Thursday, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And I will see you guys in the next episode. And I'm going to go to sleep. <laughs> Love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Mwah.